This tutorial explains how to use the return statement within user-defined functions using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in the first example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to apply the return function within a simple user-defined function. And you can see this code in lines two to five. So in line two of the code, I'm specifying the head of our function. And within this function, I want to use two input values, x and y. And then within the function, I want to create a new data object, which is called c. And this data object should contain the addition of x plus y. And then in the row number four, I'm using the return argument to return the value c from our function. So if you run lines two to five of the code, you can see that a new function object is appearing at the top right of our studio, which is called myfun1. And we can apply this function as you can see in line seven of the code. So in this case, I want to use the input value five for the x argument and the input value three for the y argument. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see at the bottom that the value eight is returned. So five plus three is equal to eight. So in the next step, I want to show you how this function behaves if we skip the return argument. And we can do that as you can see in lines nine to 12. So in these lines of code, I'm using exactly the same syntax, but I'm not using the return argument. So if you run lines nine to 12 of the code, you can see that another function is appearing at the top right, which is called myfun2. And if we apply this function to the same input values as before, as you can see in line 14 of the code, you can see that the value eight is returned once again. And the reason for that is that the R programming language by default returns values that are printed within a function. So in other words, it's not necessary to specify the return function explicitly. However, you might still use it to indicate in your function at which points a result is returned. So in the first two examples, I have explained how to return a single value from a user-defined function. However, I want to show you another example where I'm using the return function to return a list of data objects. And this is what I'm doing in lines 16 to 20 of the code. So if I am running these lines of code, another function is returned, which is called myfun3. And once again, we can apply this function to our input values x and y, as you can see in line 22 of the code. And this time we have created a list output and this list shows the results eight and 15. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.